Tonight, 26 years later, he goes for his 500th win at Missouri. But it will not be easy. They will face 40 minutes of hell from the 12th-ranked Arkansas Razorbacks, who've already upset Memphis State and Arizona on their way to a 4-0 record. Tonight, in Columbia, Missouri, it's Missouri Tiger basketball, as tonight the Tigers take on the 12th-ranked Arkansas Razorbacks. Many other things we all know about the great guy this guy is. Watch his defense tonight against Arkansas. We may also see another Tiger tonight for the first time. Marlo Finner, transfer from El Paso, make it Razorback. Here comes the opening tip-off. Chris Heller in the middle for the Tigers, and it's controlled by the Razorbacks. Robert Stone, Missouri. Their big man, Dwight Stewart, in the middle. Tap the pass to Booker. Drives, dishes to Warren. From the baseline, he got it. Jeff Warren on the board for the Tigers, and it's three. Fudip driving. Strong bucket by Javon Fudip. He gets on the scoreboard in 6 4. That's a beautiful move on Missouri. Good pass to Booker. Back shot. 6-6. Six, six. Five. Good work by Lamont Frazier. Prudent. Got it. Nine. Two. Here's the pressure from Arkansas. The Tigers break it. Heller to Prudent. Nothing to it. What a good pass by Chris Heller. He really looks for that. 11 to 10. Crudup, the first one good, tie game at 11. Look for Heller to go to the basket or look for Crudup to go to the basket when, it, when the ball goes to the baseline. That's what's open with a little bounce pass. Javon. And we get our first look at Marlo Finner. And the crowd going nuts gets a hug from Javon Crudup. Marlo has not played for two years and it, with a rare rebound. And he brings it down for the Tigers. And to Finner. as a Missouri Tiger drains it and it'll head to the point. They love this guy. Inside, quick spin, put it up, get the foul, and his first basket has a stand. Oh. Atkins with a rebound and he puts it back in. And all of a sudden the Tigers... Lamont Frazier from the baseline. He was looking past and hits his first shot. And then on defense, the Missouri Tigers as the shot goes up look at that thing they are gonna love this guy in columbia missouri where they've had one or two stars Keller, a little strong but lamont frazier with a talk on that one but how about on this one there he comes right down the middle and absolutely hammered that thing down let's see it from this side here he comes into the screen bang Boy, he'll dribble across the timeline to crudup Javon Prudup with 10 points. Heller. Roger Crawford stepped right through him, and Heller just went. Heller down low. The big guy goes right past the guard. It's a, that's exactly what he's got to do. You go right to the basket. If you can dunk it, that's great. If not, you lay it up. Be on the Mizzou Sports Network. Where you're open, you're open at the basket. Marlo Finner. Marlo Finner has been fouled two times. He's taken two shots. Both times the basket has bought. You're open at the basket. Take it up strong. There's no help there because everybody else. Roger Crawford. Pass down low to Atkins from the baseline. Martin Atkins. Lamont Frazier with two free throws here, and the first is good. Did you hang on to it, you usually get a shot out of it, and you go to the free throw line. First free throw, Kins with a good pass to Frazier all alone, but they call a walk. Out. Tie ball game for, to no, Reggie. Reverse Thought about there. it is. Great pass to uh, Heller for two. Chris Heller with five points. Now Reggie White Stewart a little hit this. A little too anxious. And Reggie gets a second chance and says thank you. Thank you. And Melvin right there. A three-pointer a little long, and the rebound controlled by Arkansas, and that'll do it for the first half. The Tigers and the Razorbacks tied at 34. Gravel the half. We're tied at 34 on the Mizzou Sports Network. There's a good feeling in the Missouri air this winter, and it's coming from Columbia.
I think it started probably with the victories in the last two games of the season against Kansas State and then, of course, against our arch rival, the University of Kansas, uh, followed by the announcement that uh, our defensive coordinator, Don Lindsay, was going to stay here. Uh, and then, of course, uh, culminating uh, the whole situation was an announcement that Bob Stull's contract was... Uh, formulated and signed, and uh, Norm Stewart, uh, the same way. The contract extensions don't stop with Norm Stewart. Devine himself says he'll be around for a while longer. At the start of the second half, Booker driving. Good bank shot from Melvin Booker. Goes in the land of the Giants and puts it in, and now the others. And here comes Missouri. Need to get a good shot this possession. That's a pretty good shot. What a strong move by Lamont Frazier. He got signed. That's where you'll see the baskets are going to come from that spot once Missouri starts to step in there. Here he comes. Now look down. Booker for three. He got it. You get it in the middle. It's going to be open up. by Reggie Smith. Here he goes. Pass to Booker. And he missed it. Oh, what a rebound and slam by Lamont Frazier. But they're going to wave it off. It's a it's a technical There's foul a technical for Hanger. Reggie, Reggie. takes it in, delivers it back. Now, I missed it. But wait a minute, there's a guy right below him. If the man is right below him, it's not a technical foul. Let's see, is he in any danger? Beck is right below him. So the technical... There he, he's right Booker. underneath Booker. That's a bad call. That is a bad call because the man is right under those were hit, and now the Arkansas Razorbacks have the basketball. Tiger, take it in, take it right Booker. in. Booker over Stewart. Melvin Booker with 10 points. Game at 44. Pass to Cruder from the baseline. He gives the Tigers a chance. This is the Arkansas game, not the Missouri game. Get in there. Foul is called. The basket is good. You have to convert on free throws, and Frazier does on the front end. Tigers right now shooting only 47% from the line, but Frazier adds to that as he hits him. Heller on Crawford, nothing to it, puts it in, he's fouled, and he'll head to the free throw line. Tommy's got to take Watch Heller go to the baseline. Defensive help comes to the top, Heller goes to the baseline and lays it in. You're just not going to stop that. Here it comes, right at you. Heller takes it strong and lays it in. Deliver the ball. Hammer it. Good pass by Heller. The dish to Crudup. And Javon Crudup now with 14 points. Booker brings it across the timeline. Good it defense. Crudup got Javon Crudup against two defenders. The All right, here it comes. Him away. See, you, you cannot move when you set a screen. That's an offensive foul. That can cut into the Arkansas lead. It's now a not the case with Kruda, but it's a one point. Mm. Ah. 62-58. 62-59. A three-point game as Finner connects on the second free throw. Basket. Booker to Smith. Booker. He was in the right place at the right. That's it. That was pretty. That really was. Especially when you've been struggling from the free throw line like the Tigers have. Right back up with it. Nothing but net. It's now a two-point game. 65 seconds the crowd again. Almost a March feel. Was he the one that drew the foul? I don't think so. That was one. 65-65, 3.48 to play, spinning, got, oh man, is absolutely unconscious, 16-15 of 31 now, 16 of 32, the Razorbacks will inbound the ball with Scotty Thurman, gets it to back, five-point game, Booker inside the three-point line, Heller with a follow, gets it and slams it in. It's a three-point game, 26 and a half seconds to play. So Atkins misses the three, Heller with the follow, no good. Time is running out, there's the final.
Bell buzzer, and the Arkansas Razorbacks, ranked number 12 in the country, have denied Norm Stewart his 500th win here in Missouri, 73 to 68. Our final year, but this time of year, festivities include a border war. Norm Stewart's Tigers won the last border clash, 61 to 44, with a 16.10 rebound effort from junior Javon Crudup. Lou Henson's Fighting Illini shot a meager 24% from the field one year ago, but that is sure to change with senior shooting sensation Andy Kaufman returning to the lineup. It's time for Christmas. It's time for basketball, the border war. From St. Louis, Missouri, it's the Tigers and the Illini up next. From the sold-out arena in St. Louis, Missouri, it's the Bragg and Rights game between the Tigers and the Fighting Illini of Illinois. Hello, everybody. That's where Javon Crudup can come up big for Missouri. Ten a year ago against the Illini. And that, I think, is the key, rebounding. These two teams are two very good rebounding teams. So underneath, they're going to mix it up a lot. It's a six. And a change in the lineup for Missouri with Atkins starting at a guard. Crudup, Heller, Frazier, and Booker for Mizzou. For Illinois, Bennett, Kaufman, Thomas, Wheeler, and Clemens. Many games at double figures, but he's a tough rebounder. Rebounding is the key. We talked about it in the opening. These guys knock it around inside. They were even with their opponent or ahead of them in turnover. A foul on the play. Was it before the shot? The basket count. Okay. Pass to Heller, and you see all of the contact there before he put the shot up. Could have gone either way, but the official said it was. Kaufman takes the inbounds pass, and from the baseline, there's his first basket. The Missouri player, excuse me, John, the Missouri player guarding John to see how Marlo Finner makes his presence felt because in the game against Arkansas, he really got into the action early. There's Crudup getting into the action with his first basket. There's Lamont Frazier stepping up now, shooting over Wheeler. Lamont Frazier, we talked about it two games ago on our first time. He's shy in shooting the ball from the outside. I wonder if he made a poor decision in shot selection. There's Thomas taking the ball to the basket. Got inside Atkins and shot over Warren. Deion Thomas is so... Rebounding favors Illinois by seven right now. Wide open in the lane. Heller, and he gets it down. Boy, Chris Heller, as we talked about the Texas A&M game, can really talk about free shooting. It was a scary, scary sight last time out against Arkansas. Reggie hits the first shooting. Reggie Smith. And there's a good start from the free throw line tonight from Missouri, trailing by seven. Two for Reggie Smith, a six-point lead now for the Illini. Really made his presence felt, came in as he hits the first shot here. He drew to spark his teammates because, frankly, first six minutes, the Tigers have looked flat. So the Tigers from the free throw line are four for four. Reggie Smith from the point. Creating some offense, and there's a good sign. Four points for Reggie, Joe. That is a terrific sign. Ahead to Smith. Smith for three. Count it. <laughs> Seven for Reggie Smith. And I get the impression, even watching him in that Texas A&M game, Joe, that he wants to play this year in Illinois. We'll be back to the arena on the Mizzou Sports Network. Joe, contrary to what I said, where Reggie wants to play, he badly wants to play. And here's one of the things he can do to get into the Tigers' swing of things. Well, the scouting report on Reggie Smith has been, if he will shoot, let him. Because he just is not. Very, very close call, though. And Heller's on the line. The Tigers are hitting their free throws tonight. Averaging 17.3 a game works against Clemens now. Booker for three. Book it. Booker has made at least one three-point field goal in 13 straight games now. That's his first bat. Agility that he has. Here's a play before this. The three-pointer hit by Booker. The defense collapses on Heller. He finds Booker him every night out. Heller is two out of three from the free throw line. That's the eighth team foul. Four for Heller. He goes for number five. Illinois leads by two. Scored. Four points against Arkansas for Warren. Nine out of ten. Warren hit 53% from the free throw line. And with the way he knocks it around inside, if he can hit the free throws, he can... 7.39 to go in the first half, and we'll be back on the most... Thomas is able to fight through it. Now in the lane, Frazier. The Tigers have the lead. He gets into the lane. He is dangerous. 
Chris Heller aggressively going to the basket, but Warren is able to pick up the ball after Wheeler tried to steal it. Four for Jeff Warren. That's something we saw more of last year. Warren just having the knack at being in the right place at the right time. Kaufman pushing the ball up the floor. It's Melvin Booker all the way in for the layup. Melvin Booker with just a little hesitation around the free. Inside Crudup working on Bennett. Javon Crudup on the fadeaway. He has four. Javon Crudup. Davidson out. Keller has six points. Five percent coming into the game, but he could tie it with the two free throws. Five points now for Frazier. Could still get a shot to try to take the lead at the end of the half. Six points for Frazier. T.J. Wheeler, a three-point shooter. Let's fly. That's the end of the half. They're dead even. Missouri and Illinois, 34-34, after 20 minutes of play at the arena. Travel arranged through to a sold-out arena in St. Louis, Missouri, for the Missouri-Illinois game. And at the half, we're tied third. Sponsored by the Missouri Lottery. Making... Imagine being just 22 years old and playing basketball for one of the most prestigious NBA franchises. Not to mention getting paid millions of dollars to do it. Well, at one time, Anthony Peeler did imagine it. Now, it's his way of life. When you dream of being in the NBA, you don't dream of being on the Lakers. You dream of against, uh, playing against them. And just to have the opportunity to be on the team, it's great. Peeler is part of a basketball family featuring some of the legends of the game. How does he fit in? You know, he was a leader at Missouri, so he has the mentality and the attitude that we're accustomed to. Uh, plus, he's a good kid, you know, we're really, really happy, and we welcome him with open arms. I think it's just a matter of time before he's really productive and making a major contribution to the team. Right now, I, um, establishing the role of uh, playing tough defense, then coming down and making things happen on the fast break. And... He plays a lot of two-guard position, and every night uh, that we play, uh, every two-guard is a score. So just as, just as equally as he can go out and score points on people, his guy has, has that same ability. So he'll, he'll, ha he'll have to make that adjustment. These adjustments have become a quick study. The Lakers plan on looking to number one to help make them number one. percentage for both clubs way down. Look at the scoring leaders. Reggie Smith leading the Tigers in scoring. 34 inside, 20 minutes left in this one, and a steal by Booker. He got it away from Wheeler, and the Tigers have the lead. Boy, that is a lazy pass by Rennie Clements. He just... T.J. Wheeler liked what he saw in that last three-point attempt by Reggie. Here's Warren going in strong. That's nice to see. Jeff Warren was determined. He got the ball left in this game. Here's Crudup over Bennett. You've got to take advantage of the size differential, and the Tigers are doing that line. He has seven points. Make that eight. One for number nine here tonight. Such a difference. In the one did. Here's Reggie Smith trying to move in on Michael. He got it down over Michael. Boy, that's all Reggie Smith, and once again, he pressured Gavin Harris, and then Reggie Smith finishing on the break against the big guy. That's good work by Reggie. Missouri showing some patience, and Finner takes it to the basket for a basket and a free throw. Oh, what a strong move by Marlowe Finner. He went in, got the contact on his right hand, and finished. Boy, he was determined. He slammed in there. He wanted the contact, got it, finished strong, and I think Marlowe's a little happy with that play. Third personal foul on top. Here's Clemens trying something, and it's swatted away. Frazier on the drive. Another turnover by the Illini, and a timeout is called. The Tigers trying to take advantage of the four ball handling by the Illini. In the second half, on the Mizzou Sports Network, 48 to 38, and look at this play by Reggie Smith starting a fast break. Reggie Smith has had a one, the ball, and then hits it so hard that Lamont Frazier gets a breakaway out of it. He takes care of the rest, and the Tigers open a 10-point. 
He's giving him a good eight, nine feet of room to work with. If Reggie wants a shot, he's got it. He has. Reggie Smith scoring the basket. Crudup stays in, as does Deion Thomas. They're right in the middle of the paint right now. Here's Booker. Booker. He has 11 now, and the Missouri lead is back to 10. Sort of faking the give and go. He'll take it himself. Ball straight away by Crudup. Oh, look at this. Deion with good position on Marlowe, but Crudup said he forgot about me and took care of the rest. Here's Coffin. Deion Thomas picks up the foul. Crudup, a 41% free throw shooter, is perfect for his ninth point. His new Andy Kaufman will get his points, coming in averaging 20 a game. Kaufman has 19 tonight. Crudup has reached double figures now with 10 points. And Thomas, having to come down under five and a half minutes. With Missouri leading by five, by eight. Booker, 14 points for Melvin Booker. Boy, that is a crusher for the shot clock. Crudup, open for a moment, shoots over Michael, can't get it in. The tip is good by Warren. Warren with the follow. Great ball movement by the Tigers. When Lamont Frazier comes up with the loose ball. Booker from the give and go from Smith for Warren. Boy, that's pretty. Booker to Reggie. Reggie back to Booker. The line eye players' heads were spinning at that point, and then Booker just dumped it down to Warren, and he gets the easy lay -in. That was pretty. Time out on the court. 16 left in regulation with the Tigers ahead 63-57 on the Mizzou Sports Network. Melvin goes to Reggie. Reggie back to Melvin. Now the defense is thinking about Booker. They forget about Warren. And Melvin finds Jeff Warren underneath for the easy lane. Michael shoots for three. Long rebound, Missouri. No, saved by Coffin, and he walks. Michael, but his momentum was making him fall. His knees hit the ground, and he was trying to stop himself, but he couldn't. He traveled. 34.4 seconds remaining. A bonus for Booker. 15 points for Melvin tonight. And forces the Illini to hit two three-pointers and make three trips down the floor. 16 for Melvin Booker. Michael from the outside. Clemens will try a three. Oh, my goodness. Rennie Clemens with a three-pointer. He has six. Smith was faked off, to, off his feet and now going to the free throw line. He connects and goes three for three with 12 points. Reggie Smith. Is what an atmosphere for this bragging rights game at the arena in St. Louis. Mark Stewart. He looks for number 13 with 23.3 seconds to go. Here's Thomas. Reggie Smith going for the rebound. Can't get it. Time is ticking down. Keen hits the three. And Illinois takes the timeout with 5.6 seconds to go. Missouri leads by one. That was a professional work by Kaufman to save it. And Keen wasted no time. He was behind the throw three-point strike. Nothing but net. Let's take another look. Austin with a save. Missouri. The Tigers try to inbound and run out the clock. Frazier with the run of the baseline. Finds Booker. Head to Reggie Smith. Warren is open. That's the game. The Tigers ball movement gives Norm Stewart his 500th career victory in Old Mizzou. the Tigers had lost eight in a row. They've now won two in a row, beating Illinois tonight, 66 to 65. We'll be back on the Missouri Sports Network. Player of the game is Reggie Smith with 12 points, two rebounds, and five assists. Player of the game is a presentation of each Tiger telecast of GT. Missouri wins two in a row over Illinois in this series. The Tigers go to four and one with a final score tonight of 66 to 65. Happy holidays, everybody, from all of us at SNI Sports Network. For Joe Buck, enjoyable evening. The Tigers win by one. Good night.
Illinois and Missouri is 1992's 66-65 win for the Tigers. It was Missouri's second straight victory over Illinois and their first winning streak in the 12-year Bragg and Wright series. It was also a landmark win for Missouri coach Norm Stewart, career win number 500. With 7.9 seconds left to play, Richard Keene hit a three-point shot, but the Tigers held on for the 66-65 victory. When you talk about backcourt depth, Missouri has plenty of cards up their sleeve. Tiger point guard Melvin Booker leads the core with 17 points and five assists per game. But Southern Illinois can shuffle their backcourt as well as any team in the nation. The Saluki's ace in the hole is the SIU Saluki. Good evening, everybody. In line four games for the Tigers taking the last three. The ball is volleyed. Missouri wins the tip. Reggie Smith in the backcourt. Leader inside to Crudup. He takes it up over to Silva. Here's Crudup with a follow. 2 0 Missouri. Strong move by Crudup, who is being matched up by 39 on the shot clock. 2 2 ball game inside Crudup. What a nice move there, Joe, considering he had to Silva right on his hip. Reggie to the baseline. Great pass to Crudup. Javon left the traffic clear and got the basket. He for the scoring. He does not have a very good outside shot. Good rebounder, good defender. Warren off the feed by Booker inside Bell. Rebound Atkins. He'll put it up. You get a rebounder along with a very good Ashraf Amaya and he'll sit on the bench probably for the rest of the first half. Five. The second shot in play at 14-28 left in the half. A half dozen now. Nice whirling move to an open Crudup. But Reggie Smith was wide open. That was Javon Crudup on the bench. Five point Tiger lead. Here's Booker. Booker scores his first bucket. Fenner transferred from UTEP last January. Inside, Missouri gets the basket with pressure right there after Warren tipped the ball. And here's Reggie Smith. To a wide open Melvin Booker. Showtime. Nice lay in by Booker. Give him 2 to 11. We'll be right back to the Hearn Center on the Mizzou Sports Network. There was a grab, but no whistle. Reggie Smith's wide open. Touchdown. First Smith to Booker. This time, Booker in the middle while the Tigers work the ball outside. Von Von goes. There's the first basket, or the first three-pointer on the floor. Atkins is two out of three, and you get him hot early. He gets that confidence level up. Help out. He stepped out of the way and open up the lane even more for Atkins, who converts one of Lamont has scored three points now. GTE is a proud sponsor. He looks for the Tigers' 30th point. Counted. Back the other way, Lamont Frazier. That's a great look by Reggie. He's 0 for 2. 1 for 3. Smith to an open crudup. Even though Javon put the ball on the floor, he still got the basket. Here's Crudup. Car rebounds. That's the end of the half. After 20 minutes of play at the Hearn Center in Columbia, the Missouri Tigers, who are after their eighth win of the season, lead by 10 over SIU. 25 over SIU at the half on the Mizzou Sports League. Meet Missouri's newest coaching addition, assistant Lee Winfield, a product of the Gateway City, a seven-year NBA veteran, a man who knows the game. I, I try to be a player's coach. I've done everything the player has done. I know what he goes through. I, I felt like he's felt before. So I, uh, my experience and my feelings, uh, I can put myself in his shoes and he can understand that I've been there. So I think that helps in our relationship. Another relationship Winfield shares is the one with his son, Julian. Last season, both were members of the St. Louis University basketball program. Now they are Missouri Tigers. Both are pleased with the switch, but there is one snag. Julian must sit out a year because of the transfer. We talked about it coming in and that you'd have to sit out. Your season at uh, the first year is going to be practice. So you've got to come out and play practice like it's your game. And we accept those things and we, we think we can handle them, but uh, come game day, uh, it's awfully tough for him. Man. I'm very gracious that my dad is here with me because um, 
before in previous years we didn't have that much time to spend together and now because he was out working all the time but now he's working here with me so he can watch me improve and uh, he can help me improve also so I'm just very very happy that my dad's here with me. Julian knows what Norm Stewart and the rest of the Missouri basketball family knows. Lee Winfield is a man committed to helping young athletes excel at a sport that is his life. I'm Brian Nooner reporting for the Mizzou Sports Network. Lusk, not Timmons on the foul. Second foul on Paul Lusk. One team foul each way. Another free throw coming for Mel. Booker. Bucket. There's 18 in a row for Melvin Booker. However, Prudup comes right back for the bucket. Good determination by Javon Prudup. He was against the man-to-man. -man. Here's Prudup. All bottoms for Prudup. You got to get, though, maybe size-wise, Carbondale a little bigger. Prudup is having a wonderful game. There's Booker, 11 for Melvin Booker. Just have the feeling he's going to... Spinner at the point. Really been a problem for the Tigers the entire season so far. As Frazier hits the second plays put on by the Salukis was for Lowry to take the open three-pointer and he missed them all. Crudup gets the basket, Booker the assist. Six. Javon Crudup. Remember, when you're having good times with good friends, drink responsibly because friends know when to say when. A reminder point, Missouri lead. Two points, Missouri lead after Lowry hit for points six and seven. Missouri is in the lane, one-hander. Crudup puts it back. 18 for Crudup, and the Tigers go back. Pavlovich with the shovel pass for Tyrone Bell. Pavlovich, that's a three. Nine points for Mirko Pavlovich. Missouri is leading by one tonight. This is Amaya into the lane, and an offensive foul is fourth. Lead with Booker in the front court for Crudup off the give, the shot, counted. Great give and go by Booker and Crudup. They've been in this spot two or three times. Pavlovich, a three. There's the first lead for SIU. And Pavlovich raised by SIU to go up by two. Now Warren inside takes over. What a strong move. Into the middle. The basket by Frazier. We talk about it every telecast. Lamar couldn't get the roll. Finner can't hang on to it. Smith can't get the bucket, but it's tipped in. Finner was the closest to it. Marlo Finner was very 70%. 44% from the line for Missouri tonight. And a big, big. You'll see why Norm Stewart wanted to travel. A little whirling move by Timmons. And then Finner. Got the ball. ball when we return to the Hearn Center here on the Mizzou School. Big eight play. Booker has two free throws to nine point. Can tie the game. Counted. Came into the game. Melvin Booker did rank. Let's watch. Blocked by Crudup. Poked away by Smith. There's the shot at the horn. We're going to overtime. time at the Hearn Center in Columbia. From the free throw line, John, but overall, he has had the best game for the Missouri Tigers. Amaya and Heller jump center. Missouri has the ball in the 61. Both teams are getting countless offensive rebounds. Brutup had missed. Give and go pressure from the baseline. Frazier has 11 points, a chance to make it 12, and a chance to make it by Atkins. Here's Finner in the lane. Atkins puts it in. Great work by Atkins after Reggie Smith got into trouble trying to... There are the numbers from the free throw line. Zucker gets the roll. By one. 16 for Booker. Seconds to do something. And there's a Smith all the way in for the basket. He has four. 
that shot. 11.6 seconds to go. Bell is hit three in a row. Some jerseys are in the backcourt, except Bell on the line. Well, he got the bounce. 11 points for Bell, a three-point lead. Here we go. this game to a second OT. Wide open for 22 for Javon. What a great lob pass from Mel Fenner from the high post. Booker to the low post for Crow. 24 for Javon. A great save. Here is Bell. Here's Kruna. Amaya was reaching. Then the entry pass by Booker. Crude up a little jump hook. And the Tigers, the second shot in play at 38.8 seconds to go. He nailed it. Booker, this one is in play at 31.2 seconds to go. Second overtime. 21 for Melvin Booker. Three of 12. 25 for Crudup. If it's not already. Points for number Tigers will not need to even inbound the ball if Southern Illinois makes the switch and every single fan in the Hearn Center popped up, puts on their coat, heads to the parking lot. Final score here tonight, Missouri wins in double overtime, 82 to 76 over SIU. Missouri is 8 and 2, SIU 9 and 2. Missouri 8 and 2 now in the season. For Joe Buck, I'm John Rooney. Thanks for joining us tonight, a double overtime game on the Mizzou. He jumped things. Both these teams featuring a lot of black in their uniforms, both with new uniforms. Sit down low on the blocks. His shot is good. It's interesting. Crudup, I think, has problems turning and shooting, turn around jump shots. Nice give and go there to Warren. Tremendous play to Jeff Warren. They don't count on Warren for a lot. They felt like they needed to come out and play a great defensive performance here today. Good head fake by Crudup. Will the basket count? Yes. What a strong Nice job. You don't see the entry pass, but that's what establishes an inside attack. Three. Melvin Booker hit a huge shot against Southern Illinois earlier this week to send the game into overtime. Uh, they talk about they don't have an answer. And Booker hits both free throws. Booker, the most reliable of the Tigers. Three-pointer Booker. That started a string. Donnie Boyce. He's a sophomore. He's played a lot of basketball. I think he'll be careful here these next 15 minutes of not picking up that third foul. Oh, Atkins. Quickly inside. Warren spins. Hodges left his feet. Warren puts it in. He's frustrated right now by the defense of Missouri. Booker inside the three-point line. Melvin Booker now with seven. Though he wants to play. Atkins. A little bit of uh, trouble from Hefty, who fouls him, and Atkins gets the roll. He's a legitimate three-point shooter. Over half of his field goal attempts this year are from the three-point stripe. That's added bonus to Missouri if Atkins can start creating some offense. Mark Dean, also a senior, but he's not available right now. And another turnover, this time by Terrell, the senior. And Allen picks up his third foul. 
his head up right here. His contact is drawn right there. Keeps his head up, never loses concentration. Go to the bed. Uh, Schulte has to come in and play some minutes. He's been bothered by a back. Ted Allen, a very athletic 6'10 player that Colorado touched the ball. Now, at 07, he's a, he's a very difficult matchup problem. Boyce. Boy, he knifed his way in there nicely. Nice move by, by, by Boyce. Nice pass. Well, Colorado, though, they can't win this basketball game without Donnie Boyce in the second. Well, Finner left wide open. Charging in. Right, took it right at Hodges. Pete Hefty checks back in. That's a small lineup out there for CU right now, isn't it? Small lineup, but with, with Poncho. Offense, he just out there and kind of gets in the way and makes things happen. Oh, oh critical mistake. Big mistake by Pulliam. He threw it right to Cruda. Our offense, though, instead of starting to create so much. Hodges fighting for the rebound. Instead, it's Finner. They say he's a great offensive rebounder, and you just saw We watched him yesterday in practice. And Cruda pits his first free throw after he... Dave, you mentioned a point as we came down the floor there that Colorado needs points from Robinson. The other players on the floor have to be smart enough to realize that, too. All right, in 47% from the left. Missouri enjoying a 10-point lead. Finner pulls up for the jumper. Mark Sandy Golgart in the afternoon are bonus points for Colorado. Crudup with the smaller Robinson trying to guard him. Just takes him right to the hole. Crudup now with eight points in the game. Stolen away. Here comes Crudup again. And again, there's that full court pressure. Back off and contain a little bit. Especially in that position on the floor, right? Exactly. He's easily tucked in your pants. What do you do if you don't have it tucked in? What, what's the penalty? Do you have to sit out? Is it a, is it a technical foul? No one's ever... Frazier, good move inside to Crudup. Hodges got sealed off by the basket itself, and Crudup have a job the last five minutes of the first half, extending their lead. Instead of allowing Colorado to, to close the gap, they've extended their lead these last five minutes. Now. Frazier. Oh, what a move by Lamont. What all effort. And it pays off. Points. Norm Stewart over there has got to be thrilled with the way his team's played this first half. Great shooting from the outside. They're only negative free throw shooting, and they've been doing better. Well, as soon as he touches it, that's going to be it. Pulliam throws it up. Well short of the basket. And the Tigers get Donnie Boyce and Ted Allen in foul trouble. Javon Crudup has a big free throw. Atkins, who got in foul trouble himself in the first half. Boy, where for the most part? Boy, Atkins is feeling it right now, isn't he? He can do that. They're basketball players. Poncho said he spent hours and hours in the gym shooting free throws. Crudup again. Boy, he is tough. Well, he killed game, and they start looking around and start doing too much creating. They got to stay with what got him a 20-point. Robinson with his second foul. And Atkins for a three. A voice almost with the steal. Atkins gets it back to Booker inside the three-point line. It's good. It's a two-point shot from Booker. Oh, right there. Marlowe on the bench with a towel over his shoulder. But Norm will use that as a teaching point. You don't win over 600 ball games if you don't know how to win. And Norm Stewart knows how to win. Well, he does. And I think one of the things characteristic about To put the ball on the floor and create shots. Now, Allen is staying in there despite his four fouls. And Heller takes it right to the hole. Christopher on the fly. Boyce blocked it from behind, but right to Frazier. The sixth after this from Budweiser. Pushing him with four fouls. Booker. What a shot by Booker. Well, we talk on Fan Network and their nationwide family of regional sports cable networks. Warren adjusts the sights and hits this. He can't find the range, and he probably would have been better off attacking the basket in that situation right there. They had the numbers, attack the basket and get two points out. Experienced point guard, very tough. Very tough if you don't have that. Smith hits the three. Smith who rarely shoots. In fact, that's his first field goal today. Nails a huge three. I got to step up and hit a shot, and he did. And Smith will get to the shooting two from here on out. Shot clock down to 19. Uh-oh. 
inside and a foul. Frazier gets a big basket and the foul on sidelines. And if Frazier can hit this free throw, Missouri will be back on top by 10. He does. So the Tigers, who led by as many as 21 in this game, now lead by nobody from Missouri has more than three fouls. And Warren with a big free throw. He counted, and he goes to the free throw strike. And Warren, the senior, hits both free throws with one. And Crudup hits the free throw. Who Nails the second. Front end of that shot. Now he's got the, the back end, and he nails that one. They haven't been playing their best basketball probably in Norm Stewart's career, but they come in and pick up a solid. They got some big plays by, by guys like Frazier and Booker, and I think really established themselves. Those are games that you have to win, and Missouri, is as, as solid a game as they play today, it's funny, he made a, a statement earlier in the week to watch Melvin Booker extend it. Robinson banks at home, a three at the buzzer. Norm Stewart's club too strong. The final score in Boulder, Missouri 91, Colorado 87. For Jimmy Dykes, I'm Dave Armstrong saying so long. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Incorporated. Center here in Las Vegas, Nevada. It'll be the Missouri Tigers paying a call on the UNLV running Rebels. The Tigers 9 and 2, the Rebels 6 and 1. Hello, everybody. That's that climactic. Let's take a look at the lineup. First for the visitors from Columbia, Missouri. Javon Crudup, really a keeper. And we talked about Rodney Massimino. He has won six of the seven games that he has been the head coach here at Las Vegas. Still struggling, I think, a little bit, despite what he says, with coming here in the shoes of Jerry Tarkanian. Well, he said it. One and having a difficult time doing it. They were working on it at practice yesterday. They've spent a lot of time on it. The tip is finally controlled by him. Warren underneath couldn't get it to go. Out of the double team for Ryder. You see Warren outside. Pretty big man to play outside, but he moves so well without the ball. Turn around, Booker. Melvin Booker, a great turn into the paint. Gave him an easy one. Booker beat everybody back, however. Transition defense right now. Crudup has not touched the ball very much. Atkins with his second basket. So much for patience and pounding the ball down. Ball game now, incidentally, for Norm Stewart's Tigers, and he is instant offense. They got to jump on him quick. Atkins with another good look, his second three. UNLV, the three-quarter court pressure, allowing the ball then to go in the corner and not nearly there. There was a foul there inside on every break. But Atkins instead sticks the two, and after we're separated at first, he is at one tough customer. He's another guy who's had a circuitous route to UNLV. The key for Willie Massimino this year is Thomas. They call him the general here. Reach in foul before the, no, I thought they called a reach in, but Frazier took it all the way to the basket. Lamar. Well, they wanted to get up close. Yeah, yeah that's up close. close. To three stitches. Little off-balance shot going to the basket by Booker. Get something positive inside. There's the good pass. They can get that whenever they want it. And if they are in the ball game now for Missouri. And Haygood in the ball game as Finner takes it to the basket. Offensive foul. Reggie Manuel down. Booker knocks it in. Foul, because this year the technical foul also counts as a personal. Was that on the team because of the prior warning, or was it on him? 58 remaining first half. Vegas leads by... Finner draws a crowd, puts it on the floor, takes it to the basket. Nice spin. Got a little with Reggie Manuel and D. Don Thomas from the outside. Atkins converts. Five, that's 54% over their last three games. Frazier at 64%, not a great free throw shooter, made that one look. Gets them both. Missouri need anything with it. First missed shot of the game. Frazier gets in the lane and puts it in. But Frazier really has me 33 and Missouri 30. We'll be back right after this. Not a long time. A lot more than that. I think they'd let uh, him take that shot just about all day long. Atkins, Daniel, and they got the miss. Kudup kick out. Now Atkins for three. He can shoot it. Three, one, go. 
Booker, penetration, fall away. Off the dribble no from the... Run out of two. He doesn't want to go stand on the free throw line, and you develop those sort of free throw shooting habits and confidence and rhythm when you're 12 for dribble. When he catches the ball, you better be right with him. The same with that guy, but he missed everything. But underneath for the follow is Warren. That's good sign for 13 from three-point range, usually 36 on the year, and getting excellent looks at the basket. And again, but Missouri King. But I think there's an awful lot of good teams in that conference. Well, Long Beach State has already proved it, and they lost their first conference game. Their dome in Santa Barbara is unbelievable. And they've got a very solid team this year. Pan American Center at New Mexico State. Now you got the gold mine. That one. Smith gets it back. Great hustle by Manuel running the floor. But Heller underneath for the dunk. Chris Heller at 6 10. Stuck it. Frazier gets it happen before the halftime break so he can go in with a good feeling. Frazier's second try is up and good. And Frazier. It's Frazier. Looks at the clock. He's going to have to do something with it. Pulls up and missed the shot. Very bad possession for Missouri to end the first half. We come to the end of the first 20 minutes of play here, and it has been an up-and-down game to say the least. UNLV 55, Missouri 49. Let's take you back to the studio now. And John Son. Ryder with 17 on 7 of 9. Gibson with the four three-pointers. But a guy who really contributed was Everett Gray. We'll talk about him in just one moment. Javon Crudup, who was to be... Who's really in charge out there, especially with Crudup out of the lineup. Warren got underneath nicely. Warren came with the right hand. Good patience by... Booker with a good penetration, but he missed the shot. And Warren follows nicely. Yep. Warren. He's been a very effective offensive. He's got 22. That would be a shot that Willie Nassimino would not want to see. Warren got a man in the air and gets the easy Warren. deuce. Warren was six. <laughs> Atkins count the basket. And get to the free throw line. The guard. Is that we're on Gucci Road? Yes, we are. How do you like that? Huh? And believe me, we really bring the level down. Frost. Got to pull this back out and set things. Crudup going into the paint. Excellent, unselfish look by Heller. You... Frost passed at the three. Atkins will take it and stick it. Well, Atkins, talk Good about Atkins again. He's got the feeling, but he missed that one. Heller steps in front for the rebound. Give it up to Crudup for the basket. Got another three. The weak side. Oh, we got some... Gary and Kruda, or Gray rather than Kruda, having more than words and a great job done by the officials. I mean, they stepped in right now. Excellent. It's a very tough place for officials. There's the blockout, and then Kruda, you don't know if he was retaliating, throwing an elbow up into Everett Gray, and then they square off, and in comes the official. And they're about to go again. Now they're going to get thrown out of the game, both of them. Kruda, at the very least, is gone. Booker gets the first. And this will be the last one. That will go the other way, and now UNLV will shoot four. Over from the weak side to take the charge or help on the screen and roll. Atkins fires up a three. He's got another one. He's got one who's carried the scoring load for Missouri. Tries it again. Nice oh. touch. Going to take it into his own hand. But don't let Frazier get going. He did a little bit in the first half, but not in the second half. Atkins again. Boy, he is really shooting the lights out. Great perfect. 1988, 81 to 79. Atkins for three. Great point goal. Boy, he's got the stroke. Atkins again for three. Oh. That was NBA three and all of the... There's a look at what Atkins is Frazier, the penetration, the give off to Heller to the basket. That's the way he's drawn up. Heller is an athletic. Well conceived game plan, I think, for Roly Massimino. The, the offense just took care of itself. 101 to 84 on the final score. As Roly Massimino has won his record to seven up and one down. Third loss of the season for Norm Stewart's Missouri Tigers. That's Javon Crudup. Another picture hanging in the Hall of Honor of prominent Missouri basketballers. 
Missouri meets in Lincoln, Nebraska, the capital city of this great state, as been wherever you are this afternoon. Hyatkowski, number 52, controlling. Could have got it. Down to Booker. Oh, what a pass. Warren. Beautiful pass from Booker coming down against Johnson. Crudup scores on a nice turnaround. This comes away. Atkins drives. Got it. And the Tigers are up six. Crudup driving down the lane. Strong. He's got it. Watson's alley here. He sees it. It's open. Nebraska moving to cover up. Chubbick, as you see, on the move, slides in. I think he... Second team foul. Crudup only a 51% free throw shooter. Convert. Norm Stewart doesn't like what he sees. There's the free throw by Warren, and the Tigers have... <laughs> Tried to get it in there, it's batted away, but Crudup comes up and scores. That was just strength. Crudup took that. Missouri might get a 2-0-1. Booker with a three. Oh, boy. Good stop and pop right there. Bone's going to do. It should help on uh, plugging up the middle and maybe taking away some of the fouls. That's what they're trying to protect. Well, I don't know who they're going to give that to. To Booker. Booker's three won't go. Crudup doing a job underneath. Javon Crudup fighting his way in. Here, he now has 10 points in this first half, does Strickland. Warren from Hiller. Chris Heller. Down under, a nice one for Finner. Keep by Smith, a little. Kruda. Oh, what a good job by Kruda. His strength, we talked. 17 points off the bench against B when he had 34 points. Shooter out of Boss Point, Mississippi. Booker took a glance at the clock. Halftime. And the Nebraska Cornhuskers have their biggest lead of 10 points. From the shooting, try to narrow into that lead, not let Nebraska extend it, which they've already done by two points. Good drive. Booker driving in. He's got. Booker. Norm would rather, I think, <laughs> have them yelling at him yeah. than he would. Good ball movement. Booker hits it. It was a good high low. There's a high pulls down to the low. It didn't feel like he had it because they sucked back with a four. Finner at the line. Another missed free throw. Atkins. Charge. Foul on Atkins. Charging. The lead. 49-30. This season, so he's... A big part of their offense. Booker hits it. He is fouled by Terrence Badgett. Oh, 10 points, which included two three-point shots. 13 points for Booker. Timeout. 15-29 remaining in this one. They're charged with the foul. And the technical. Booker hits it. In the arithmetic. Fifth and Gary, they're a much more physical team than I had anticipated. Crudup gets it off the glass. Well, we talked about penetration against the zone. You saw it there. They are able to hit it inside. They drop a man out of that two front into a... Oh, deep three. three. Deep, deep three by football. I like to go in to the middle there. Frost hits the corner. Follows. Good hustle there. Frost doing a nice job. With the Cornhuskers. Three for Booker. Got it. Oh, a big three for Booker and a whistle on the play. It's going to be Heller underneath. There's a look back at the free throw shooting in this one. Atkins a three. Well, we said they're going to have to get some outside shooting. It's starting. Booker driving into the lane, takes the jumper. He's got it, and he is fouled. And this is some comeback by the Tigers. And Booker was a weird struggling right now. I think he'd like to look to get something good. Oh, what a pass. By Frost. Jed and Frost with a rebound. They kick it out. Watch Frost reading the play. The good lob pass right here to Heller, who he said can run the floor, lays it in. Frost has interjected. 0 for 4. Well, he gets a big one there. The line in the last two minutes. Isn't that funny? Misses four that didn't even look good. Now he drains two. <laughs> And it is a one-point Nebraska lead. Boy, good catch there by Chandler to save. Warren steals away. Here's Frost. Missouri can take the lead back. Atkins with the three. Yes! Boy, I'm 
telling you, this crowd has gone completely dead. They really need to... Atkins. ...out of inferring, which is what it's intended to do. They need to come down and set wide open short shot. Strickland ties the game. Oh, and nice right move. back comes Atkins. Boy, Atkins is uh, lecturing Smith on how to make this free throw. Let's see if it helps. Got the roll. Got the roll. That's the first point in the game for Reggie Smith. Hey, Edmund, as we thought the key. Warren driving and scoring and a wonderful assist from seconds on the clock. Underneath to Warren. Warren scores. Oh, what a setup of a play right there. Beautifully run. And now we got all oh, mistakes. Mistakes are costly. Foul on Gregory coming out of there. A push. Let's watch him come out now. We'll see. Oh, my wow. gosh. Wait. No doubt about that one. Wonderful camera work by Matt for Nebraska. Warren hits the free throw. We'll come back for these Tigers. Great read on the defense and the setup of that lob pass, too. They did an excellent job. Warren. 20. The score is tied at 71. Timeout. 71 all. And Booker. It's a good time to foul. Booker, six in the league. The foul. Warren on the line. Air ball. That will bring him out. Well, Warren in the last two minutes of play, he was four for six for these two. Chubbuck rebounds. Strickland, a three. What a game he's had. 23. 74 all. Chandler got it. Boy, bad ankle and all. He gets it done. Missouri wants a time. Let a guy get in the act of shooting down underneath. And this guy, you got to be, oh, he takes it to the no help back defensively. Marvelous play by Booker. Born again looking in. Gets it to Atkins. Atkins fires. No, we're going to overtime. 76 all. Well, he had a little more time, maybe, but you've got to do what you have to do. <laughs> so it is overtime coming up between Missouri and Nebraska. We'll return in a moment. Missouri, uh, Gary Pace by 25 points, a career high from Melvin Booker. And Nebraska, Strickland's got a career high. Away from Crudup, off the pie, Kowski! Seven points for Boone. Fenner off the glass. Good patience. Back off. Strickland. Oh, what a play. Oh, and it's good, and Crudup commits the foul. Coming to a minute and a half. Kowski with a big block. Takes two possessions of the three-point variety just to tie. That's a big free throw. 18 points for Piatkowski. <laughs> 85, 78. Oh, that should not happen. At oh, and get away with it. Keller foul underneath. I said to Andre Woolridge out there. Chandler. Two possessions. In and out. Rebound, rebound taken down by Finner. Big rebound out to Booker. Finner fires. Got Big it. shot. Oh, you don't have old Booker almost called this really come up. Yeah. Strickland. 27 points for Strickland. 86-82. Booker. Dumps it off. Atkins. Oh, what a <laughs> They got to get the foul. Got to get the foul. Look at the timeout. Time Good thinking by Chandler. 25.9 seconds remaining. Nebraska by one. Now this. For Back up, baby. Back up.
Two-point lead, Nebraska. 16 points for Chandler. Let's see if Booker handles this it by himself. Oh, what a shot! Unbelievable! All. Keller fouling Strickland. I think Coach Stewart liked that. I don't think he wanted that foul. <laughs> Looking down here to the right, Gary, the former Missouri great John Sunbold is working on the Tiger radio. He's standing up. He can't stand this. He shook his head on the foul, too, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he did. Strickland back at the line. Chance to break the freshman scoring record. He makes one. Yeah. Cut short a while ago. They got to make sure they get somebody back. All right, Nebraska by one, but Missouri with the ball. Let's Booker take it by himself. Tigers have no timeouts. Here's Booker going in underneath. Put it up to Crudup. He missed it. Crudup gets it back. They battle for it on the floor. That'll count. What a finish! No foul underneath. Tail go extra z. Missouri with the ball. Let's Booker take it by himself. Tigers have no timeouts. Here's Booker going in underneath. Put it up to Crudup. He missed it. Crudup gets it back. They battle for it on the floor. And it counts. What a finish. No foul underneath. Facing Missouri. So keep it right here. Still plenty more from Big Monday. Javon Crudup hopes the Tigers can mow down the Wildcats. That's up next. Everybody to the Hearn Center in Columbia, Missouri, where tonight, Big Eight style, it is the number 23 ranked Wildcats of Kansas State as they come calling against the Tigers of Missouri. And here are the standings in the conference. Kansas got surprised yesterday up in Lincoln. They're five and one. Should K-State win tonight, they will have a share of the lead for the conference. And a Missouri wins concerned 15 points a game and almost 10 rebounds. And this one is underway from Columbia. That gets the opposition's attention as well. I know that Norm Stewart certainly was focused last night and it got his attention. This is Ron Lucas who has just come into the lineup, number 50, junior from Baltimore, Maryland. Three to nothing as the Tigers go on top. Henson is coming to the lineup. In the eyes, head up. Nice little bounce dish. Henson strong to the right. And that's Crudup who makes the block, but Frazier came in. Bothering and challenging Smith. Running jumper, Lamont Frazier counted. Back by Frazier. Tipped and Henson loses it. Stolen back by Frazier. Frazier already has had a major slam by Heller, and he's one for one, which last week never did do it. On the floor, lost by Warren, and he will jam it home. And we talked about him with his team and what he liked. Being slow it down, set the offense, play some half court here. On the floor and stolen by Reggie Smith. <laughs> Smith working against Bean, switches it. It's two for him. Give and go, Smith puts it up in the friendly roll. Six points for Reggie Smith. So normally, shot clock is under 10. They get some help inside and put it, but he ran right by him and he gets the easy layup. 17 to 5. Shot clock is now a 22. Hooker all the way to the hoop and nobody picked him up. Well, he got a little. Booker, 4-3, got it. What a sweet move. He drove almost like a... Frazier strong to the hoop, pulls up and scores. Seven. Put up almost 15 points a game, nine rebounds per contest. Gets them both to go, so let's take a break. 3.37 until halftime. 13-point Missouri lead. Well, the Wildcats have not won here in Hearn Center since 1985. In fact, K-State's tenacious 2-3 zone shut down the Tigers, and Tom O'Farrell was locked in from long range as he finished with 24 points. 
15 point Wildcat win nine seasons ago. This is the everything in that one. Henson pushes it up the floor, back to Lucas and blocked by Cruden. Feeds it across to Lucas, and then Cruda gets over there and makes the block. Actually, next Soviet star, 7:30 Eastern time. From the guard position, in addition to close to five assists a game, knocks the second one down. He provides the penetration ability to get guys open shots. Smith now with eight points. Altman says, look, guys, we didn't shoot it well, but we're only down 10 if they come up with a stop. Booker for three, counted. K-State gets it away, and they head to the locker room as Booker swishes the three, and it is the Missouri Tigers, 33, K-State. Number two, not exactly the style of basketball we commonly see in the Big A points a game. Well, you take a look at what Frazier and Smith were able to do combining for 17 points. Actually, 16. 16 of the 33, though, they account for almost just about 50%. And 7 of 10 as far as field goals. And that's enough sometimes. Warren. Count it. He'll go to the line for a three-point play. Give and go. Booker comes away with it and another K State turnover. That's number 10. And this is Frazier. For the Wildcats. Good to put the feed to Warren. He gets caught in the lane, puts it up from point blank range and scores. But tonight has been a nightmare so far. Six points for him now. Fouls and in our game last Monday at Lawrence, he was held out of the starting lineup as a punishment because Lawrence with the dish, Booker to Crudup. Crudup gets the friendly roll. He's got ten. Boy, I thought Vincent. Points for Warren. Booker, he'll push it up. Stops at 14 and nails it. That's sweet. Love right. their hoops down there. To the hoop and the Not a good job defensively as Frazier was allowed on the doorstep. Of the Atkins comes into the lineup. Warren, got eight and a half minutes, scored 17 points for Missouri. It didn't matter where he shot it from, it went in. Then all of a sudden, he couldn't have hit the Atlantic Coast. Took it all away. Five minutes and 45 seconds left to play in this one. As Booker with the jumper, got it for three. And all of a sudden, it is a 12-point Missouri lead, and the crowd is back in this one to go the Wildcats and the Tigers scratched and clawed here at the Hearn Center. Gene Delaware tied it at 60 with 22 seconds left, but Jeff Warren's amazing score of Anthony Peters' jumper with three seconds remaining gave Mizzou the victory. There it is right there. Just kind of slung it up there. Saturdays ago? Not really. Georgetown, a relatively young squad, and UNLV really happy to... Smith gets the good roll on that one. Not Frazier, who had to leave the game in the second half. And when he did, uh, Atkins was ineffective. Been for cold. Uh, yeah, cold Stop, yeah. and for 40 seconds or a minute. See how they bounce back from this. The group that you were looking at before you got the hand shot. Syracuse, then, as I mentioned, we go to Nebraska for that second game. And the well, it was. First time around. It's not going to happen anymore That's since right. they were the preseason pre number seven. And you wonder, too, about the fact that he knew those folks were down there watching in terms of playing your normal game.
And Missouri had a little bit to do with it too. Oh, well, they did. Yeah, I mean, defensively, as we said, that they led the conference at, uh, in defense as far as percentage of shooting with 39. No! Less than five, and Smith will bring it back out, and the Missouri Tigers will win this one going away. Our final score, Missouri 67 and Kansas State 51. So it is Kansas on top at five and one, and then comes K-State and Missouri. Final score, 60. Remember a week ago sitting here, you said if we're going to contend, if we're going to keep things going in our direction, we must beat Missouri at home. And it was a tough one, but the Cowboys did prevail. Brooks Thompson. Strokes it, uh, doesn't stroke that one down, but he did play a fine ball game. Get the block there from Crudup on the inside. Good hustle play on the country's uh, part as far as getting the <coughs> ball back out to Randy Rutherford. He knocked down a three. You can see country is surrounded, but still has the uh, strength to power the ball up. Uh, I mentioned that uh, in this game he was 27 points and uh, had 14 rebounds. Burley had 10 points. Thompson 18, Rutherford 13. So we had four starters hitting double figures. Here's a nice two on one break. And that's Fred Burley flushing one down. Just exactly the way you want to run a two on one. Make the one defensive man cover you and then if he doesn't, you shoot the ball. If he does, you kick it off. Vaughn Bennett misses a shot, but uh, follows it up, uh, converts the basket and gets the free throw. Vaughn came off the bench and, and did a good job for us. Nice high low pass from Bennett into uh, Bryant Reeves. Here we are in the second half. Great hustle play by Milt Brown. You can see the intensity in this game, and that's the way it is in the Big Hate uh, contest right now. Everybody's fighting to get up in that first division where you got a chance at an NCAA berth. There you saw Thompson knock it down from outside. Thompson and Rutherford's numbers are very strong together, averaging 28 points combined, eight rebounds, eight assists, three steals a game, and as you mentioned, they are a a tough tandem in the backcourt. Well, there are some great uh, guard combinations in the Big Eight, but uh, I really like uh, Randy and Brooks' play, the way they've been performing the last month of the season. Brooks was challenged a couple of times last night. Frost, he and Frost got into a little confrontation and seemed to keep his composure and responded well. He uh, gets a little feisty once in a while. <laughs> I like that competitive spirit, and uh, but he's got to make sure he keeps it under control and and focuses in on what's at uh, hand, but uh, there's nothing wrong with being competitive like Brooks and uh, our players are. Here's the play. You can see uh, Milt Brown throws the ball. We'll talk a little bit more about it, and there's the shot again. Some of the players asked Country, said, did you uh, call glass or off the board? And he <laughs> said, well, I knew it was in all the way. Yeah, and he says he made one at Gans America. We, we need tape of that country if you're watching. Somebody needs to supply us with that. I've never seen a crowd uh, just to hit a, a shot that allows you to tie the game, come on the court as quickly as they did. The student body just rushed out there, and I guess they could have called a technical foul. I've never seen that call, but it could have been made. Great block by Country. Now we're in the overtime period. Good lead pass to Fred Burley. Interesting decision there to go ahead and take advantage of the numbers and to push it on in for that bucket rather than to pull it back. Well, I think that's one thing sometimes uh, we do and other teams do. You, you get to a point that you get too uh, passive and you don't want that to happen. You've got to continue to be very aggressive. And Storyline today, the offense of Oklahoma and the defense of Mizzou. And the opening tap goes to Melvin Booker. Well, they'll be patient, but Oklahoma, very solid man-to-man -man defensive team. You got to hit your open shots against the Sooners because they rebound well. 0 for 3 from outside the arc today. Booker pulls up. Says the game goes on. Side to Warren. Boy, he gets it and knows what to do with it. The senior Jeff Warren for Jeff. Warren again. Almost ripped it down. Heller! He did come to play. Mizzou. Booker. Wow! Crude up no. Three Sooners had it, tipped it away from each other, and Webster got it. And Melvin Booker, those are the two perimeter threats. And the three produces those long rebounds, and Warren! Warren with a half first three pointer of the year. Heller, wow! Neither of the coaches have it. It's a wash, but nobody's happy about it. 
Atkins, that's a two. You got to know if Atkins. Rudolph short. Warren right there. Always seems to be in the right place, doesn't he? Well, they've set screens, gets that half-court offense going for Norm Stewart. Kruda with his first basket of the game. Boy, Missouri can't buy one so far. Booker got one. Well, when you're not shooting well from the field, you've got to... Nearing the three-minute mark. Nice pass. Kruda. You don't have time to be playing with it inside. First free throw made by the Tigers. He'll get the bonus. And spend 20 or 30 minutes on the charity stripe, or you can do like they did yesterday and say, okay, guys, let's shoot six free throws and we're. One and one rolls home. Evans drives in, tried to get a pass to Conley, puts it up at the buzzer, and it goes. That's the kind of half it was for Oklahoma. The Sooners lead a 30 lead over the Missouri Tigers at Mizzou. Wow, what a... Keller got one of two. We'll be right back at it. Inside. Nice pass. Heller! Chip shot for Chris Heller, who's got a... McCrudup, when he went to the corner there, uh, Jimmy, he looked like one of those gym. Uh, he's not built like a lot, most of the gymnasts I've seen. <laughs> but he and Warren, try. hey, hit them both. By Oklahoma in this game. They've been out-rebounded in each of the last five games since Salier went in the hospital. Hey, Frazier might go into the free throw shooting hall. Take your time, concentrate, keep that ball high. That's nice free throw form right there. Four for... Heller. Boy, that was an ugly shot. Warren, though, right there. Wow. I almost, maybe a pass. Oklahoma State of Kansas State here on Raycom. And to check your local listings for the game that you're going to see in your area. Conley just threw it away. You can't ask for more than that from your ball club. Warren hits the free. There was a rule where you didn't shoot free throws. You could just get it out of bounds <laughs> instead, right? That's right. Well, they got one or two. Booker for three! <laughs> Booker gives Missouri to within one. <laughs> Frazier weaving in. Heller! Oh, wow! My, my, my. Frost for three. It's good. We're up to our rear end and alligators. All we want to do is drain the swamp. <laughs> well, his team is draining it right. For me. <laughs> he hits them both. Wow. Missouri with their first lead since it was 2-0. And we'll be back after this from Phillips 66, a performance company. That title goes to Chris Heller. Watch him take it strong baseline, gets under the basket. All you can do here is the supreme slam. <laughs> Backwards. Hey, he's not worried about these free throws going down right here. He can run. Got them both. You just missed one from point blank range. You're struggling offensively. You looked at Chris Heller to pick you up. <laughs> a couple of minutes ago, I think I'll get me another one. Defense makes a mistake, though, and tries to go for the steal on the block. If you gamble and don't get it on the block, you give up an easy two. Wisely bring it back out and restart the offense. Booker nails it. Heller nails Miner with an elbow. I think they'll count the basket. In foul trouble, he just took it right strong to the basket. Heller again! Oh! Get me the late word now from Lawrence. Kansas on top by five with two minutes to go. Leading Colorado 65-60. Booker will get. Well, Missouri play and Webster gets up off the floor just in time to foul. So Warren will shoot his free throws. Both coaches are going to look back on this game. 
and there have been some big calls. Some have gone plays. Under a minute to go in Lawrence. Colorado coming back at 65-63. 10 on the shot clock. Booker gets the roll. And we are with 1.50 to go. That's only the second tie of the game. The last time it was 2 all. And here are the Tigers. I still think you look for Melvin Booker and Javon Crudup. Those are your go-to guys, but he threw it away. Great defensive play by Oklahoma. Van is fouled on his way to the hoop. He'll go to the line. He is eight in this game, led by as many as a dozen. This seesaw effort has seesawed back in favor of OU, but they've got to hit their free throws and clear in this game. And that really spurred his Tigers on. And Oklahoma regains the lead again. Shot clock is turned off as Oklahoma. And then the Cowboys with that miracle finish to win in Stillwater earlier this week. Somebody's got to help him. Somebody's got to help him. Good job by Lamont Frazier, an experienced player. I'm not sure that's the play they drew up, though, was Frazier with the ball out top with 10 seconds to go. Trying to get it to Booker. They can't. Frazier throws it up. No. Rebound. Who's got it? Oklahoma. And Oklahoma's going to win. The time has expired. There's a foul on the play. Van may be going to the line, but no, he doesn't. That is it. Oklahoma comes back. What a tough game for Missouri to lose after taking an eight-point lead. A buzz saw in the seven-seed Missouri Tigers. I said all along Missouri was a lot better than their record, yeah. and they proved it in the uh, Big 8 tourney by not only beating us, but by going on a tournament that the Wildcats and the Tigers no. would be playing for the championship. I'm not sure who they are playing. That's not going to be an easy game for anybody because they are playing with a lot of confidence right now. Of course, the Tigers getting the automatic uh, berth after Here's a, winning the tournament. There's a nice uh, lob pass by Scott Sutton into country, and that's uh, two of country's 13 points, well below his season average. Uh, of course, uh, he was voted MVP of the uh, Big 8 season and well-deserved, averaged about 20 points, 10 rebounds. The championship game of the Big 8, two Cinderella stories. The Missouri Tigers seated seventh, the Kansas State Wildcats seated number five. The only conference with... Yesterday was a day of upsets as Kansas State's 5'10", Anthony Bean rallied his Wildcats against arch rival Kansas with his 19 points and 5 assists. Kansas State overpowered Kansas in the final minutes and make their first championship appearance in five years. Missouri stifling defense and an explosion of production from 6'10", center Chris Heller has led the Tigers to the final. With his 20 points and 7 rebounds yesterday, Heller has made a loud announcement he's here to play. Today, the Tigers and the Wildcats in a Big 8 catfight. That, if Missouri were to win the championship today, the Big 8 could very well have seven teams in the tournament. This is how they got here. First round action. K-State surprises Nebraska. Missouri upsets Oklahoma State, the number two seed. Then yesterday, K-State defeated their cross versus made. Well, he's the kid that Missouri's been looking forward to step up to. Norm Stewart has been, or Chris Heller rather, has been in Norm's doghouse off and off the air. But he's up, and also the invitations go out. We're set from Kemper Arena as the Tigers of Missouri and the gold with black piping and white taking on the purple and white of K State. For Missouri to try to establish Heller early in the ball game. Booker way outside for three. Melvin Booker, the junior from Monmouth, of this ball game than he was almost the entire game yesterday when he seemed leg weary from that first game against Nebraska. That's Warren inside. The pass from Heller. Gary, two games ago, Missouri did not give up. It's, we didn't get to do this off the top of the telecast for the Missouri Tigers. Warren, Crudup, Heller, Booker, and Reggie Smith at the other guard, and he has really stepped it up a pace. Booker had been the man who was so consistent. And for K-State, Collier Jackson, Cunningham Jones. And, and you see why there. Nobody checking him. Nobody putting a body on him. He goes right to the glass. Good up way outside. He wants to get in the scoring action, and he pops a 17. They showed a mixture of defenses yesterday. Man for man, and the zone. Smith, and just what I was talking about, he has picked it up a notch, and really taking some pressure off Booker. 
Nice move by Smith in and out and back in. That's where you're really seeing the change of Smith. He's aggressive. He's taking the ball to the basket. Oh, these two different articles on him. Along the baseline, shot will go, and he'll get an opportunity for a third if they count it. No. Rod Spittler says offensive foul, player control. Kansas State doing a great job of shutting off the baseline. He gets by here. Watch him come in and set. There's Jones. Good helping defense and a good call. A ball not released before he makes the contact. So erase the hoop. They could use some help from him when he's in the ball game. Inside to Heller. Jumper got it. One of the one of the wraps on him early was he short armed the ball. He shot it going up rather than at the top. And he's 0 for 10. Eight of them have been from the three point strike. So you ought to be aware of him. Long three-pointer rattles at home. Mark Atkins, who had just come in the ball game, and he's a streaky shooter. He had 17 and eight and a half minutes against Kansas in the first. Amazing here. Crudup last year shot free throw percentage about 66, 7 percent. This year he's dropped down below 50. Atkins goes down. Atkins way outside. It's off the front iron and with the follow. Unbelievable. Ball down, move it around, and get a better cut than he got that last time. Heller brings it back to the middle, and it goes. In addition to having confidence, he's having some good things happening to him. He has just gotten the roll to him right now for, for Missouri. You have to spot up. One is this guy right there. you got to be aware where he is, or he's going to nail it. Mark Atkins. And Gary gave you the numbers of how streaky he can be now at 16. Game clock now goes under one minute in the first half. Showed up off the glass, got the turnaround, and he nails it. You know, it's so hard to keep down on your feet when you're... You see, as that three-pointer doesn't go, throws it away, and they'll get the break. Smith. Missouri is going to have the lead at halftime unless this one goes by Bean, and he misses. We are at a halftime. For the Big 8 Conference Championship, and it's the Missouri Tigers... On top by a pair, 28 to 26. The Reebok halftime report, LSU and Kentucky, also Louisville to BCU, tournament time across the country. Chris Fowler, let's go back to you in the studio. Offensive boards, 52% for the Tigers, 44% for K-State. We saw one big thing there. Kansas State only man shoot his free throw. We watched yesterday, it was so he just he was in a funk earlier this year and it is so great because he's got that shot going now when nice follow through Rose Smith against Bean pulls it up 13 footer not there battle for it it's screwed up and on the follow he scores and pass overthrown will it be saved that thing almost went in Warren with the tip put up with the foul and all of a sudden the offensive board going the Tigers way in the second half and that's a part of their game and they've got to have those and a steal by Smith. Feeds it to Booker. He's fouled. He'll go to the line for a couple. You know, I look over at your sport now. I told Dad, I saw him for the game. I said, you're the best dressed towel keeper I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> I made enough the towels for the Tigers. <laughs> the Missouri Tigers on top. <laughs> Booker. Largest lead. They hit a drought, and now here they are in the championship game. I think you talk to the other Big A coaches, and most of them will tell you, their club defensively has played about as well as anybody. Second guy that pushes or shove gets caught. That's and right. what happens Every all the time. time. <laughs> Look who's back. Mark Atkins, number three in the ball game. Mr. Streak, and he's on a streak right now. 40 to Checked off. He went to the basket, and he really made the play for Heller because he forced the defense to come and help out on him. He missed the shot, but Heller was wide open to go up on the board. Heller and Cunningham. Atkins gets the screen, kisses it off the glass. Check it, Frazier. Smith comes back in. Reggie, the junior out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I tell you, what a metamorphosis, and I'm just, I'm happy for the kid because, boy, earlier, uh, he, you could see the look in his face, just staring into space, saying, I know I'm a better ball player than what I'm throwing, but it just wouldn't happen for him. It was the fear of being up on the line. You're high, that's good enough. Keep those big guys off your back. Smith. 
pressure off everybody with that happening. Yeah. Kruda hasn't had to worry about trying, but he's not really he's about to go under 20. He's do very deliberate on this trip. Three-pointer. Mark Atkins. I don't think Mark Atkins knows what it is to be tight. Big Ten action today. Indiana, obviously, should be a number one seed. Reggie Smith continues to impress and another one of the players who has stepped up for the Missouri Tigers and one of the reasons they're in a position to win the Big A champ. Down low, the last two times they've gone there, they go again. He delivers it. Threw it up the quick turnaround jumper toward the baseline. Nailed it in all the... They've been in and out. This is the second time they went inside. He makes a spin move, takes the jumper. Gets it down the time before they came into him and the importance of about a player. Now he's more of a veteran player as you look at him coming back down for 32 and white for K-State. And Norm Stewart, I watched him and threw him the bench, giving him a lot of encouragement, just telling him way to go, way to hustle. I noticed her fix. She was asking him about a move, how to play. Warren comes back in. Fray Booker on the cutter over the middle. And he battles oh, and gets his own rebound. That's what happens. They beat you on penetration. They shoot it. They're right there to recover their own shot. Well, of course, that is 630 deep. Big 8. This is, uh, these are the standings as far as the regular season. Hey, Missouri wins this. See, Norm Stewart has to be reminiscent. Uh, through them. 1978, he was the number seven seed. He not only won this tournament, but went to the big party. And Norm Stewart going to the, one of the veterans of this club. Great story. And the fact that uh, where they saw him is he scores. They went down to the Mississippi Gulf Coast and were down there looking at Latero Green. And then a couple of years went by and the uh, coach was saying they, they needed another guard. And, and Rich said, Rich Daly, Said, well, you know, it's a pretty good kid down in Moss Point, Mississippi, and they went back down there, and he only had one other scholarship offer. And by golly, he said, if you'll guarantee me, he said, yeah, I'll sign with you. And he came to Missouri. Well, really? uh, the first team, all Big Eight: Brian Reeves, Walters, Piakowski, 78 team to this squad. No, no, we're thinking, but I know down deep, we talked to talk the players, that he mentioned it. 49. The Tigers of Missouri, the number seven seed in the Big A Conference Tournament, about to win a ticket to the NCAA Tournament for him, but Reggie Smith has stepped forward. Heller has just been huge inside, and I think Warren, because of that, is... Instead of just maybe uh, 20, 24 uh, minutes a game uh, out of quality players. After this Big A, Dana Altman, the fine young head coach of Kansas State, the Kansas Jayhawks. And they had lost eight straight. That's right. To Kansas. And that's tough in particular. Is down the stretch they have uh, proven to be a little bit different. And they there did that Heller. against Iowa State, too. 9.6 rebounds, 5 of 6 from the line. Earlier this year, they had a game against uh, Kansas, and the youngster was 0 for 11 in that ball game, or had a stretch that he was 0 for 11. Ron, for the, for the tournament, he finishes up 41 points and 15 boards. Great tournament. shot in the 70 to 71 percent range so they did prove they were uh, so this is nice norm letting the fans tiger fans recognize uh, booker and crudup it is over at kipper arena the Missouri Tiger, the number seven seed in the Big Eight Conference Tournament, wins the tournament championship 68 to 56 over the Wildcats from Kansas State. Gary, it's been fun seeing you again. Uh, I think the Tigers are where they're playing now. They'll be a very worthy opponent, don't you? They're playing with a lot of confidence. Nice to be with you, Ron. So that'll do it from Kansas City again. Our final score, 68 to 56, the Missouri Tigers. Chris, let's go back to you. Tigers and the Owls, Mike Gorman and Larry Farr. First round game from the West Region in Salt Lake City. The Tigers of Missouri of the Big 8 Conference against the Owls of Temple from the Atlantic 10.
Here's a look at what's happened here in Salt Lake City today. Illinois and Vanderbilt advancing as expected, but then Santa A tournament and win it they did. 19 and 13, their overall record, and they come in as the Big 8 tournament champion. And joining a very highly recruited player out of high school, they thought it would wind up being another and great big man that they had at Missouri. He was hampered by a stress fracture last year, which slowed his development. He started off this year not playing with confidence, but has really come on strong as of late. We'll take a look at the numbers for Chris Heller, and it's amazing. Regular season, seven points a game, all of a sudden 14 in the tournament. Shooting percentage goes up nearly 20 points, and the rebound. So he's just doing it all over the floor, and he got Norm Stewart's club into the... We'll have some fun watching Aaron McKee. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. Warren Crudup. Heller, Smith, and Booker will be out there for the Missouri Tigers. Jones, Batty, Cunningham, Brunson, and McKee. And get used to those names if you haven't seen Temple play, because these guys, there is John Chaney, did not practice yesterday here at the Huntsman Center. And the reason was, he's, John said, hey, I came from the East Coast. You gave me an 8 o'clock practice last night. That's 10 o'clock my kids' time. I need to make rest my friend. And Norm Stewart, who walked up to Larry Farmer and I yesterday at practice and said, guys, this is as organized as we'll be for the next three days. <laughs> we'll see. The formation is different and the slides are different. Rudolph unable to put it down. Cunningham trying to tip it. And they call it offensive goaltender. Back rims it. Here's Reggie Smith on the break. He's got Heller on a wing. Dumps it low to Heller. And he gets two. Nice fast break and a decision at the end of the break by, by Reggie Smith. Missed three by Brunson and Booker the other way. The floater goes down for Melvin Booker. 16 points a game, the leading scorer for the Tigers. Smith thought about it. Nice passing by Missouri and Crudup knocks it down on the baseline. It's called making the extra pass. Missouri here showing what it's, it means to make the extra pass. They've done a much better job at the end of the season of playing as a team. That time you had three players that had opportunities to shoot, forced it inside. Here's Booker. Keller down on the baseline trying to find room. Reverse goes down. Second basket for... Boy, that thing's loose, and he's ready to go. There's Atkins sticking a three from about three feet outside the line. What'd you call him, Mike? He comes in ready to shoot. He's going to have a hard time getting it over them. Atkins is going to take it again. He's two for two. Five points for Mark Atkins off the bench, and that's the lead that Missouri has. These are the rebound. Gets it ahead to Booker. Booker, the pull-up. Got it! <laughs> Melvin Booker with a three. And Missouri's opened up an eight-point lead. I've watched Melvin Book, definitely a dribble shooter. He's got to put it down, and that's what gets him in his rhythm. Chris Heller turns it over on the baseline as he stepped out of bounds. Here's a matchup zone. Now, it's designed to get pressure on every man with the ball and get pressure on every shot. And there's a nice rejection. And cost Missouri, even though they're shooting so well. McKee again. 12 for Aaron McKee. With today in the West region, and Temple is on a 10-point run right now. Atkins gets his feet set, buries a tree. Eight for Mark Atkins. He spotted up that time on the weak side. And Hyden, Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones just setting back, drawing a bead on where he thought the ball would come. He didn't get boxed out, and with his quickness and great athletic ability, he's there to finish off the play. With style. Up at the line. He's got five. Crude up, a player who found life a lot more difficult. Once Anthony Peeler had left this team, people started paying. Crudup. No offensive foul is called on Javon Crudup. And Norm Stewart not believing that call. Derek Bell almost giving the look of a trap. Frazier throws it up. There's Heller for the fall. Six points for Chris Heller here in the first half. They have tremendous outside shooters. You've got to get to those players quickly. 
If you're in man, try and deny them the ball. If you're in zone, know where they are at all times. Atkins again. What a show he has put on. His fourth three, 14 points overall, and he's keeping the... He'll take it. Short from the corner. Ball goes out of bounds. Frazier tries to save it, and he does right to the official. That's the end of the first half. With the score, Temple 36, Missouri 31. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championships will continue after this message in a word. Hey, Temple, a five-point halftime lead. Let's take a quick look at some numbers from that first half. Missouri came out shooting the ball very well and still is shooting 57% for the half. But the turnovers have killed Missouri, 12 of them. They only average 14 a game. They've got a dozen here in the first half. Temple taking great care of the basketball. And as usual, Temple's trio coming up big. 32 of the 36 belonging to McKee Jones. Zone defense that time by Temple. Keller for two. One of the few times that Missouri Temple of interior passing and players looking. Smith finds an open booker in the corner and he knocks down a three and we've got a one point game on our hands. Eight now for Melvin Booker. There's the pass crewed up. Nice little turnaround. Good ball movement that time by Missouri. And Missouri out of the gate quickly here in the second half. Great trap right in front of us. Chris Keller right there. Ooh. And Reggie Smith. We keep setting up driving baseline. Clancy drew three people. You see the crowd that he drew on that drive. Aaron McKee, everybody went over to try and get a piece of that shot. That was a loud block, wasn't it? That goes in as a team. We've got a second half. There's Keller. Off the glass for two. Baseline throws it up. No step on the baseline. Another turnover for Missouri. And we've got a timeout. Temple leads by six. On the Frazier makes the first. At Missouri. Frazier makes them both. Stop the shot without fouling and then go and retrieve the basketball. Atkins. That was his first shot of the second half. Of course, he's only been in about three minutes. Long lead pass and a bad one is picked off underneath by Ivy. Not a good decision that time. You create a turnover, you've got it. He hustles back. This is on the same series. Hustles back and he gets the bucket at the other end of the team. That's quite a compliment. Gets the roll on the second free throw. Just his first point of the game. Frazier. Oh! Make that Booker on the drive. Excuse me. Despite where all the players on offense are, so he can make the correct pass and not throw it away. And zone. Four. And he's done it outside and inside. Kuda. No. Heller. No. Twice. Second time count. Both teams with a timeout left. Team fouls 12 and 9. Possession arrow for Kelly. I made the point earlier 4 and 0 oh in games decided by 5 or less since he's taken over. And looking to make it 5 and 0. Oh. All right, folks, the kid is for real, and so is Cal. And they'll play Duke on Saturday. Let's get back now to Missouri and Temple, the finale there in Salt Lake City. And the drive in the dish. Kuda knocks down the baseline jump Four for Aaron McKee. As we wind this one down, final game, Burns knocks down a three. And Temple is about to win their 18th game of the year. And the Atlantic 10, 2-0 today, defeating the Big 8 and the Big 10. And John Cheney makes his way up to shake hands with Norm Stewart. So for Larry Farmer, I'm Mike Gorman saying so long from the John Huntsman Center, where the final score is Temple 75 and Missouri 61.